What sources do you go to when you say you're researching? What do you read? Are you a zero hedge guy? Are you a Wall Street Journal? What, what do you What do you read? <sighs> You know, I'm uh, I'm scanning uh, everything on Bloomberg News. I'm scanning everything on the Wall Street Journal homepage. I'm scanning the news feeds on anything related to Bitcoin. Um, I'm s scanning, uh, you know, the major papers, the the New York Times, to see what they're thinking. I'm I'm scanning Twitter. What they're thinking. It's useful to know what they print, right? New, on the New York Times thinking, like they do a lot of. So, uh, uh, yeah, we we could go there. Yeah, but I you don't think you could use no, no, thinking just, in New York Times no, in the, the same the sentence. The point is, the point is, what's what's on the front page? Like, what is what is the narrative on the front page? Yeah. What is on the front page of the Wall Street? What's Journal? a paper that? What's a paper you read that's like not a common paper? Like, is there some a site? Or in a journalist you I, trust, I'm, somebody that writes that you follow, an no, expert. No, I don't. I don't think you could. I don't think you could, in good faith, endorse any any one news outlet in the modern world. I think, I think uh, you have to scan everything, and you have to consider what's statistically significant. And of course, what you find in the in the news media is oftentimes, it, if. 92% of the people are dying of natural causes. 95% of the bandwidth, it, it bleeds at least. 95% of the bandwidth is the most colorful way to die, right? <laughs> it's the, not the most likely way to die. It's the most colorful way to die. And so I, I think that all, all media is distorted and they're, they're all edited and they're all focused to a certain agenda. The only thing you can reasonably do is you can scan a bunch of them. You can scan, you know, your own Twitter feed will also be distorted. So you have to scan other feeds. And then you have to be continually going through this exercise in your head of saying, that happened, is it true? And then how significant is it? For, for example, Argentine inflation, 105%, is it true? No. Because the actual inflation rate is higher, it's it's indicative of a truth. How significant is it? Well, how many people live in Argentina? That's one level of significance. The second is how much money's in Argentina, and the third level of significance is how in, you know how symbolic or or how how indicative or catalytic is it to other activity that will happen in the rest of the world? Right? How symbolic is it? So you, I I think that. I'm in my 50s. I'm 58. If, if February I, 4th, by the way. February 4th. Same yeah. birthday as me. That's why I like this if, if you roll the clock back and you read the, the same right. newspaper in your teens, you'll interpret something different. If you read news in your 20s, it's different. In your 30s, it's different. In your 40s, it's different. Powerful. When you get to your 50s, if you read the same, like you read the same history book and you're reading it in your 50s, you're like, wow, I totally interpreted this differently when I was a ninth grader. Right? When I was in college, I interpreted this differently. So you have to have real world experience. Oftentimes, you'll read a story and they'll state something, and the truth is the exact opposite of what the story is. But you have to have lived life. Like, for example, you read a headline uh, We found 500 stone axes in a cave in Africa. They're between 1.2 and 1.7 million years old. Well, a school kid will say, oh, yeah, so I guess they found some stone axes. I look at that and I say, well, there was a factory that made stone axes in Africa 1.7 million years ago. That meant that there was demand for thousands of stone axes a year. That meant that there was an entire civilization that existed, right? In fact, there was money. <laughs> there was a government, there was a furniture factory, there was a clothing factory, there was, a, there was agriculture, there was an entire society. You had to have 10,000 people all working together in coordination to justify having an inventory of 500 stone axes, right? And the only reason you actually read about the stone axes is stone axes is the only thing that's going to last a million years from now, right? And so what was there was a thousand X more interesting. The fact is there was an interesting higher level civilization with agriculture one and a half million years ago. They're not writing that in the history book because the literal historian only wants to report the bare minimum. But the reason that I could actually tell you 
a thousand other things is that I actually read books on Austrian economics. I, you know, I, I ran a business. I traded. I saw the, the, the meltdown and, and the, uh, the creation of dozens of, of industries. And I understand human nature. Right. And so if you understand, you know, and you live the life, you're like, well, if I, you know, if I drink cartons of orange juice every day for months in a row, I know what's going to happen to me. It's not good. You can reverse that right? and you can figure out what people ate 100,000 years ago. You know, you, they, they didn't do the things that we don't really think are good ideas today because they wouldn't have procreated through 100,000 generations. So I think that when you read the news in your 50s, if you've lived a life, and, and by the way, like a lot of things I interpret are because I ran a company for 30 years. You know, like, for example, you know, like a teenager, you know, if you look at movies created by people in their 20s, they have this view of business people. Like the badass billionaire business guy walks in and, every, and he tells everybody what to think and they, you know, and he's the, you know, he's the evil, Dr. Evil genius. But if you've actually run a business, you know, I remember back last time I told somebody what to think and they told me to go F myself. <laughs> right. And then, you know, well, and you, you are dressed in black, <laughs> you know, you're. And now I have a meeting and, and I'm very polite. You know, like, and the more talented you are, the more polite I am, you know, because I realize that the world will go on without me. Like, the, those people think, oh, yeah, well, I got to work for the man. Well, no, you don't. I have 2,000 people in my company right now. I have hired 30,000 people. They don't have to work for the man, right? The truth is... Unbelievable if, point. You know, you hire people, point. you realize that they all, they will That's quit right. if they don't like. The CEO gets fired more often than employees do. Yeah. Yeah. I lost 27,500 right. employees, yep. right? So you, you, you think I take them for granted? Yeah. But but you have, but I, but I didn't, when I was 24. Michael, I, what a perspective. The, the time when you are most confident, when you have the most amount of formal education and the least amount of real world experience like in your early 20s, right? Because you think you can do it better than everybody else <laughs> and you haven't failed. And when you get another 25 years out, you're like, oh, I tried that. That didn't work. I tried that. That didn't work. I tried that. That didn't work. Oh, yeah, that was a really good employee, but they quit because I was rude to them. Oops, I wish I hadn't done that. Oops, took that for granted. So I guess I'm coming back to your question. How, what do I think about the news? It's like, can you give us one name, one source? Like, yeah. do you go to something that's yeah. not the traditional one everybody else goes to? Any person? I know it's not 100 percent accuracy you trust, but give us one source. No, I, I, I think I think to give a boost to Twitter and Elon Musk, the boost is there are analysts and there are domain experts on Twitter that don't have corporations, that don't have lawyers to tell them they're not allowed to say that thing, and they actually say the truth. Can you give us their names? A couple of them. Michael, I'm going to hold you to give us one follow, name. No, no. Give follow, us one follow name. Me, follow me on Twitter. I mean, you can look at all, okay, all the say, people. At I, say I follow it. about 600 people okay, on Twitter. Okay, so then follow the people you're following. Hey. There, there are honest <clears throat> analysts, and there are people that are domain experts, and they publish their unadulterated thoughts, and... If you actually put together a mosaic of all those things with your own real-world experience, you'll start to synthesize a view of reality, which is, I think, probably more reliable than any one, you know, edited traditional media source. Somebody so if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.